man, we got our uh, our daily verse, guys. This is my one of my favorite verses that I memorized as a young kid. I was about nine years old when I memorized this in ACE school. When I was I'm a nine kid, years old. I'm just joking. Yeah, when I was a kid, we memorized this verse together. Me and Mallory and Ginger and my wife Katie and all of us older people and there's some really old people on here who taught us so uh, <laughs> all of us are on here and we all learned this verse and i want you guys to learn it because it's a very special verse for us we're going to go through it together uh psalms chapter one are you guys ready to read through it we're going to read through it and then we're going to quote our verse for today okay psalms one okay. starting in verse one one through six i want to read the whole thing for you it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Okay. But the ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And the, God is the boss, and God has eyes, and God sees the righteous, and God sees the unrighteous. And God knows how to save his righteous family, and he knows how to stop the wicked people. So today's verse, Shell, we're at word verse three now, aren't we? Yeah, verse three. All right, you guys ready? Say it after me. Say topic. 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 How to be blessed. How, How to be blessed. blessed. How to be blessed. Say, and he shall be like a tree. He shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. Planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth its fruit and its season. His leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. The topic. How to be blessed. Say Psalms 1 3. New King James Version. I know that you guys are going to get this first three down this week. I want to hear it this Saturday. You know, we have the scoreboard that's going up right now, Mr. Monkey and Mr. Lion. And in case you guys were wondering, there is a leader right now. I don't know if you guys are checking it out to see who's in the lead and who's not. Would you guys like to know who the leader is? Right now, the score is Team Lions got 71. Right? And Team Monkey has got 81. Team Monkey's in the lead. Oh, listen, listen, listen. If you're on Team Lion, you got to make sure. Do your work. Put it on there. We want to reward the discipline, right? Make sure do your work this week. Hey, sir. Put hashtag. Yeah, make sure and hashtag Team Monkey or hashtag Team Lion. Because right now, Team Monkey's in the lead. All right, we want to make sure. We want to make sure we reward winners around here. We believe in winners. No. <laughs> I'm on Team Monkey. I'm Team Monkey. I, I'm Team Lion. All right. Team Monkey and Team Lion, make sure to do your hashtags. Shell, anything else before we get into the lesson? No, I think hey, that's sir. I want you to bless the word before we get into God's word here. And let's okay. make sure, guys, to get our mics on mute. Please, during the time of the sharing of God's word, if we could all mute our mics. And then we're going to get into our classrooms. Michelle, would you bless our time in the Word? Yes. Um, three. Lord, we come three. before you today, Lord, and we ask you, Lord Jesus, as your Word three. goes out, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would come and you would hover over each and every one of our hearts, Lord. Give us, Lord, the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation 
in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that the eyes of our understanding being in light, Lord, that we may know what is the hope of your calling, Lord, and what is the riches of glory, Lord, that you gave to the saints, Lord, that your family, Lord. Be with us today, Father. Enlighten our eyes and our heart, Lord. Let this word go on the good ground, Lord. You're the gardener, Father, Lord. Plow up our hearts today, Lord. Let us receive this word today in Jesus' name. Be with Nick, God. Give him the words in his heart and his mouth, God. Lift him up this day in your hand, Lord, as he walks. Lord Jesus, as you walk, Lord, through your little lambs, God. Give him your words, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, so we're going to learn about Father Abraham today. So we learned last week that the first week we learned that Adam and Eve, God designed a perfect family, and they chose to sin and try and be their own boss. So God had to find a way to save them. God made coats of skin to cover their sin, and he invited them back into his family, and they had to use the coats of skin to be in his family. And then we learned that the whole world, what happened? The snake went out into the whole world, the mean snake, and he started convincing everybody like he did to Eve, hey, you could be your own boss. You don't have to listen to God. And the whole world decided to follow the mean snake. Yeah, get your coloring pages out and you can start coloring now. Uh, the whole world decided to follow the mean snake and they all didn't want to be in God's family. So God spoke to Noah and gave Noah a big, beautiful ark. Remember we made the ark with the door on there? And God left the door open because he wanted everyone to be in his family. And it grieved God's heart because man would continually sin. Right? That's a word we want to learn is sin. What does it mean when you want to be your own boss? When you want to be your own boss, what you're doing is you're sinning against God. And when the world sinned, it separated them from God. Say this. Say sin separates from God because God. God is not sinful, right? God is righteous. So, But God stopped all the wicked. He sent the flood, and he stopped the wicked, and he saved his family with the ark. Thank God for the ark, and thank God for the rainbow because we know what happened after god kept his family safe during the flood god made a promise with the rainbow in the sky that he was not going to flood the world anymore because of man and god gave a uh, gave a command to noah he said now noah you and your sons go and fill the whole earth with and build my special family so say god wanted noah to build his special family to build his special family. Amen. And what happened over time, a lot of kids were born and grandkids and grandkids and more kids. And time went by and it came to a point where nobody wanted to be in God's family again. Now there was nobody who was in God's family anymore. And this is the third time that this is happening. Everyone in the earth wants to be like the mean snake again. Everybody wants to be their own boss. So God spoke. God looked down with his big eyes. Look, look at me. God used his big eye. God looked around the whole earth. That's and he scary. said there was no one who was in his family. And he saw Abraham. So God, just like he invited Noah into his family, God wants to come and invite Abraham into his family. So say, Father Abraham got invited to God's family. So we're going to find out what happened to Abraham. Let's read Genesis chapter 12. Get your verse papers. I'm going to try and go fairly quick, but we want to make sure and get these points. So Abraham's dad was not in God's family. Abraham's dad, he was trying to be his own boss. And he was not righteous. He liked it to do sin. So Abraham lived around a bunch of people who did a lot of sin and didn't want to be in God's family. So let's see what God says to Abraham in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get out of your country and from thy family and from thy father's household. Go unto a land that I will show you. I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless you, and curse them that curse you. 
and these shall uh, ready say all families. All families of the earth will be blessed. So God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, I want to build my special family with you and your family. But you have to leave away from all the family and the household that you live in now. You have to leave from there because they don't want to be in my family. They like being their own boss. So God said, get from among them and go into a land that I'm going to promise you. Now imagine Abraham had to leave his home. He had a house, he had friends, I'm sure. He had a business, whatever it was. But Abraham left it all to obey this promise that God gave him. God gave him a promise that says, I'm going to bless you in all nations. So if you got your fill-in paper, underline, I want to make sure we get these points. Underline what God says to Abraham. The first one, it says, God's promise to Abraham. It says, God promised him a great, big, blessed family so circle great big blessed family that's what god promised abraham point number two it says god promised to bless him and take care of him so god is saying hey you need to come and be a part of my family abraham i want you to be in my family and i want to bless we're going to see what happens here ready it says the next point number three god wanted to use abraham's family to bless the world. So now think about it. The whole world doesn't want to be in God's family, but God is still thinking of a way that he could bless them and invite them into his family. And he's going to do it through Abraham. So Abraham is the person God wants to use. So Abraham had to do what? He had to leave his family and obey God. So let's look at the, the next step. Ready? Abraham receives the promise. It's in Romans 4. This is a very important verse now. I want everybody to listen to this verse. It says, before, before we read it, say, God's family. I need to hear voices. I don't hear no voices or see mouths moving. Say, God's family, God's family, God's family, 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 family must, must, must be righteous. Be I'm going to say it again. Say, God's family. God. Must be righteous. All right, go ahead, mute your mics again. So to be righteous means to be right with God. It means to follow everything that God says. But Abraham wasn't righteous yet. Abraham lived amongst people who were not righteous. So how can he become righteous to be in God's family? Right? So we're going to find out how he did this. How did God make him righteous? It says in Romans 4... Verse 3, for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So because Abraham chose to believe God and leave his family and go into a land far away, God treated him as though he was already righteous. So say this, say, when we believe God treats us righteous. God treats us righteous. So we believe God treats us righteous and invites us into his special family, his righteous family. Let's read one more. Let's go back to our paper. Ready? So God's family must be righteous. Write that in there. R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S. God's family must be righteous like him. So we're doing these fill-ins in the main room. We're going to do some more in the next one. Number two, Abraham believed God and God treated him righteous. So God is righteous. Abraham was not righteous, right? But Abraham believed God. So God treated him as if he was righteous. Thank God for that, I'm huh? Treated him like his son. Next, yes, they're going to read the next one. Ready? Yes. It says, because yes. Abraham believed yes. God, this is very important. Everybody listen up, okay? Abraham, because Abraham believed God, he trusted and obeyed God. I think everybody heard me say that. Everyone listen up, okay? Because Abraham believed God, he trusted, he trusted and obeyed God. 
See, when you believe something to be true, you trust it and you obey it. So when God told Abraham, leave your family, I'm going to bless you and take care of you, Abraham. If he said that he believed God and then didn't listen to God and trust that God would take care of him and leave, then that means he didn't believe what God said. But Abraham believed God when God told him that he was going to bless him and leave from your family. So he trusted God and obeyed God. Amen. He calls me friend. That song is about this guy, Abraham. That's right. Hi, Ugg. Hi, Lila girl. Hi. All right, last point now. Ready? We want to make sure and read this. We got uh, Galatians 3, 7 through 9. This is so important, guys. Now, listen, if we want to be in God's family, then we have to believe, trust, and obey like Abraham. Let's see. Galatians 3, 7 through 9. It says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Whoa. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen. You guys know what a heathen is? A heathen is somebody who doesn't follow God. Or well, what happens? They did sin. A person who commits sin, God's offering these heathens to come into his family. Abraham was one of them. And God says to Abraham, if you stop following the mean snake, and if you stop doing what he says and trying to be your own boss, come to me, believe me, and I will make you righteous and put you in my family. That sounds like a good deal. Amen. Let's thank God for that. That God says, let's read it again. God said he would justify the heathen. How though? How can God justify the heathen? And it's a good question for all the moms to think about when we go to our table talk. It might be a little above some of the kids. But how could God justify a heathen without becoming unjust himself? Right. If you if a judge lets somebody innocent, uh, guilty, go free, it makes a bad judge. Right. We'll talk about it in our rooms. So uh, God justifies through faith. And it says God preached the, before the gospel unto Abraham, saying that in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which are of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So that's the three to our last fill ins here. Ready? God always plan to save the world so right world there and something awesome happened through abraham's family once we understand how did god bless the whole world to abraham well it says that god's promised son that he promised back in the garden in in in, in genesis 3 15 when he said that he's his his heel will bruise your head and your head will bruise his heel. That promised son, Jesus, was born into Abraham's family. How cool is that? That God came to Abraham and because Abraham believed God and left the mean snake and left all of the mean snake's followers, God came through Abraham's family. So you ready? Here's the final point. So circle promised son and circle Abraham's family. So here's a very important point. You guys ready? You guys are very patient today. Thank you so much. We must say we must. We must. We must believe in the promised son to be in God's family. So this is very important lesson right here. Circle believe promised son. So just for a summary, before we go into our rooms, we're going to learn about two guys in our rooms today named Jacob and Esau. And these two guys are the grandsons of Abraham. So the whole world followed after the mean snake and God flooded the world and stopped the mean snake and all of his followers. And still, after God gave a rainbow and he gave Noah a new command to fill the earth, man's heart wants to be their own boss again. They reject God's offer and invitation into his special family. And everybody rejected it and wanted to be their own boss. But God looked over the earth. Look, God's big eyes was looking down on the earth and he saw Abraham and he came to Abraham with an invitation. And this invitation was Abraham. 
If you believe me, if you trust me, if you obey me, you'll be in my family. And I will bless the whole world through your family. I want to come and live in your family. Whoa. So Abraham gets to be in God's family, but Jesus came and lived in Abraham's family. And every single one of us today, if you're out there under the sound of my voice, every one of us today have an invitation. We have a decision of what to do with this invitation. We can either accept it by faith and believing in God, or we can reject it and try and be our own boss and do our own thing and not be worried about God and follow the way of the mean snake. So as we go into our lessons, Abraham had a son named Isaac, and Isaac followed the family promise. Hooray, right? And then Isaac had two sons, one named Jacob and one named Esau. And Jacob and Esau were twins. They're the same person. So what do you guys think? You guys think Jacob and Esau is going to be a part of God's family too? I want to hear some responses. Turn the microphones off. One second. Put your mics back on. Take them off mute. So Abraham had two grandsons. You guys think they're going to be in God's family? Or you think they're going to follow the mean snake? What do you think? God's family. Okay, let's let's go to our lessons. We're going to go to our tables, and we're going to find out if Abraham's grandsons followed after God's family, or if they accept the invitation, or if they want to be in the mean snakes family and follow after their own way. So, let's pray. And go before the Lord and make sure. And uh, we're going to go to our second paper in our second room. So, Lord, we come to you, God. Lord, we thank you that you have big eyeballs, God. Lord, that you're able to see us, Lord. Lord, and you offer an invitation this day, Lord. Lord, to all mankind, Lord, that you want everyone to be in your family, God. You don't desire that none should be separated from you, Lord. Lord, but man's hearts, God. Everyone's heart was turned mean, Lord. They don't want to be in your family. Lord, they want to try and be their own bosses, God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you chose to save Abraham, and you gave him an invitation, and that he obeyed you, Lord, and he followed your voice, God. Lord, I pray like Abraham accepted it, that we would all accept your promise this day. Lord, that as we grow up, as we sleep at night, when we say our prayers before we go to bed, that we would remember that we have a God with big eyes, who's looking down on us and inviting us to be in his family. And he is the boss. Lord, you're the boss, God. We thank you, Lord, that you're not just a a mean boss from a distance, Lord, but you're a good boss and a loving father who takes care of us and redeems us and makes provision for us, God. And Lord, we thank you, God, that you stopped the wicked, Lord, like you did with Noah and the flood. Bless our time in our rooms this day, we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen.